In today's economy, clients are looking at us to do more with less, and we're trying to respond to that with the BIM process. We are using BIM more and more in, the, uh, in our large infrastructure projects. In the uh, feasibility stages, it allows us to show at public hearings what the project's going to look like, and then we can work with the clients so that they can look at the costs and, and, and benefits of, of different alternatives very quickly. BIM is allowing us to work very collaboratively with a, a contractor and an owner, and that allows us to really fast track a project. The Crumb Creek project uh, was a, a very good example of one that was given to us as a sole source by the client because they realized the potential of being able to deliver uh, a project that they urgently needed much more quickly using this tool. We've saved on average probably 30% time in our finishing of a mass grading project. With machine control, its ability to talk with the Autodesk Civil 3D product has been a great thing for us. Our guys in the field, right from our superintendent down to our operator, love this stuff. They won't walk onto a job site now unless it's got the 3D machine control. Our Spirit River project is a highway realignment job and uh, the province had labeled this one critical priority. So what that meant was it had some very stiff penalties if we didn't meet the, the completion in the amount of about $5,000 a day. There's no doubt that BIM is helping us to deliver a better product to a client. We know uh, from the 3D model that everything's going to fit, the interfaces are, are, are resolved, clash detection is, has been sorted out. So at the end of the day, we have a product that we know that the client has seen as a 3D model, uh, we know he's bought off on, uh, and it reduces the risk for us. So they're not only just going to get a model, but once the construction is finished, they're going to get a model that, that has all the information in about their project. So they'll be able to use that model as an asset management tool for, the, for that project for anything that they want to do. Complexity in a hospital is, is vast. Um, traditionally, if you don't design something on a BIM model, you're going to have conflicts out in the field. Uh, when you have a project of this size and you have conflicts in the field, um, stalling for one day might be $100,000. On Cathedral Hill, we're using almost all Autodesk products for modeling and collaboration. On last count, we have approximately 30 models coming from 35 different companies using 30 different pieces or versions of software. BIM and IPD assists us basically because it has a level of predictability. We know the schedule, we know the cost, we have real-time estimating being reported every week. We've also been able to drive the cost down with BIM because we get input from the various trades in regards to what is the optimal way of doing it. We're able to cut construction uh, budgets and schedules down tremendously by using BIM and the Precon. We're able to go in and create our plan using a model, pull pieces of that model out for fabrication, and in a controlled environment make very large assemblies and have these large assemblies delivered to the job. We've already started using the model basically to figure out just-in-time delivery, BIM also allows you that after the construction project is completed, you can use it for maintenance. When I think of BIM, um, the industry I see kind of leans towards the M in BIM, which is model. And we try to lean more towards the I in BIM, which is the information. Um, in doing that, we're able to get more productivity with our models. And, using 4D, 5D scheduling, costing. It's a virtual construction. We virtually have designed the entire building on a BIM platform. That is probably the largest value, uh, that you know exactly what you're going to be getting um, and that it can actually be built the way you've designed it. Mazdar headquarters is really aimed at uh, advancing sustainable design. It's within Mazdar city, and the goals of the city are uh, zero carbon, emissions. The project itself is 103% uh, positive energy, which means it's actually producing more energy than it consumes. Through our process and BIM as part of that process, we've been able to meet those sustainable goals. On Mazdar project, we uh, had to get together at the very early stage to establish the process for BIM. Mazdar was by far the largest project we all had undertaken. The design team actually got together weekly. We swapped models um, before these meetings 
and our modelers would get together and review any modeling issues or any clashes we were having between the models. It really sped things up for the design team and for coordination. Before we employed any renewable energy strategies, we needed to reduce the amount of energy the building used. So we actually came up with a sawtooth facade idea that actually shades itself from direct sunlight. So we used Revit you know, to build a model and to, to review the geometries, and then we used Ecotech to kind of review the shadow conditions um, and the, the direct solar gain conditions on the, on the facade. Uh, the photovoltaic system at, at the roof level has a very uh, unique arrangement configuration as well as the uh, tilt angle. We use Ecotech to optimize those tilt angles and improve the output of the system. An important feature of the Mazdar headquarters are what we call the wind cones that bring daylight as well as ventilation into the heart of the building. In terms of geometry, we have a very complex steel cone and trellis structure that's sitting on top of a concrete structure. So BIM also helped us to figure out how those two structures were going to come together and work as one system. Being able to visualize the project in 3D and being able to share the complex geometry back and forth between the architect and the structural engineer really helped us achieve our tight construction schedule. We use the information in the model more than the model itself with our team. And a lot of that goes because the engineering process is, it requires a lot of analysis. And we're able to overlap using BIM, using Revit and Ecotech and working with the engineers, overlap all these different um, disciplines and come up with a kind of integrated solution. And I think the, the ability to look at all these aspects together in a holistic manner was of tremendous value to the project and allowed us to reach the sustainable goal of 103% positive energy. The BIM process allows people to experiment and to get quantifiable feedback. It allows people to go outside of their boundaries and explore more creative solutions.